My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramer America. Other people want to make friends. I'm just trying to make you some money. My job is not just to entertain, but to educate, teach, put in context. Call me at 1-800-743-CBC or tweet me at Jim Kramer. Down with the tyranny of the tenure. We got to stop obsessing about the seemingly terrifying declines in Treasury yields. Today's session was typical. The yield on the 10-year got hammered before the market opened, so the averages then, therefore got hammered, too, even as I did my best to protest that when I was on squawk on the street. Then as Treasury yields bounced back, stocks did, too, with the Dow closing down just 22 points. It had been down as much as 589. S&P up 0.08%, nice recovery from being down nearly 2%. And the Nasdaq also up 0.38% after being down about 1.7%. You know what I'm calling this today? I'm calling a huge win for the bulls. Normally when you see this kind of wild action in bonds, yields nose diving, it means a recession is right around the corner. But I think that's a profound misreading of the current situation. The truth is, U.S. Treasuries are giving you a much better return than bonds from any other developed country right now. So if you live in Europe and you want a nice, low-risk, free return, you exchange your euros for dollars and buy some U.S. Treasuries. That drives our rates down. Call it globalization collateral damage. Unfortunately, the rush of bond buyers from overseas is spooking the stock market. Stock traders see the action in bonds as a symptom of incredible weakness here, a moribund economy. In reality, I think it's a symptom of weakness abroad. One that actually strengthens our economy because lower long-term interest rates are fabulous for our nation's financial health. Sure, the dollar may be too strong, but that's nowhere near as as negative as lower rates are positive. You want a mortgage? shape? you want to finance a new car? Those rates just got a lot more enticing. So why the heck does the stock market sell off every time the yield on the 10-year gets pulverized? And it probably will be again. Because there are tons of investors who get scared whenever they see interest rates moving sharply. You know what? In either direction. It's unnerving. Usually means something has gone very awry. And look, they they may be right. I mean, you always have to take the bond market seriously. There's a real possibility that it's forecasting a serious economic slowdown. But it's also possible that we're simply seeing a demand shock as a flood of foreign buyers load up on U.S. Treasuries and investors here are getting spooked for all the wrong reasons. It's quite easy to do those kinds of trades now. When I was a hedge fund manager, it was very difficult to even buy, say, Gilders or Lira. Now it's like, here's how I see it. We know why the rest of the world's interest rates are plummeting. There's not enough demand for money in these countries, and their economies are stalling, especially China. Now, that's bad news for American companies that do lots of business overseas. I agree. We don't want to slow down the rest of the world. However, just because they're having a slowdown over there, it doesn't necessarily mean there's slow down over here. We don't necessarily import it. When you listen to all these macro commentators who look at the tenure and then use it to guess the strength of our economy, you think the sky was falling. Over and over again, they predict we'll be overwhelmed by the global weakness. That's why they think rates are going down. They're reflecting a flight to quality as investors seek safe assets in anticipation of a recession, coupled with a looming financial catastrophe and less demand for money. These pundits tell me the bond market is never wrong. My view? I think they're blowing smoke. I find the whole top-down approach to the economy completely bewildering, and I'm being an ambassador of goodwill there. Why make judgments based on the big-picture numbers when we have so many data points for actual companies that are far more accurate? I bet these doomsayers who fret about the 10-year can't even name 100 of the names in the S&P 500. They can't even name 100, one-fifth. Me, I live, eat, and breathe this stuff. That's why I prefer to take a bottoms-up approach to the economy. I listen to hundreds of different companies, and I synthesize their views in a kind of a mosaic to get a sense of what's going on. I think my mosaic is better than their pastiche. So in keeping with my bottoms-up methodology, today I checked in with J.P. Morgan. Hey, I'm the nation's largest bank. Always worth listening to. I got lucky. CEO Jamie Dimon's on his annual bus tour. He stopped trading. The guy rides a bus. And he's currently canvassing the East Coast to take the pulse of our economy. Now, according to J.P. Morgan, here's what he's discovering. Credit credit card business still booming, up 8%. Consumer lending is incredibly strong. Uh, Charge-offs, meaning bad loans, continue to decline. That doesn't sound like a recession to me. It sounds like an expansion. While overall GDP growth has slowed slightly, and Jamie agrees with that, J.P. Morgan tells me that consumer spending has fractionally, get this, strengthened of late. Is anyone saying that? Well, the largest bank, only because I checked in with them 
It's not just this one company. While the bank stocks keep plummeting, almost all of the 25 largest banks in America say consumer credit is very strong. Uh, how about away from J.P. Morgan? All right, last week, mortgage applications increased by 5.3%. Refinancings were up 12%. That's according to the American uh, Mortgage uh, Bankers Association. That's exactly what you would expect with Treasury yields plummeting. That's a collateral positive. A 30-year fixed mortgage fell to its lowest level since November of 2016. I want to get one. How about you? It's great for housing, which punches above its weight in terms of economic growth. Does that sound like a recession to you? 3.7% unemployment rate, lowest in 50 years? Hey, put it all together. It's hard to believe we're really facing a severe slowdown, which is why I don't want you to panic when you see, like, tomorrow when we come in and the rates are 1.4%. <laughs> It's probably going to happen. It's probably going to happen. All right, why do I care? Well, let's just pick a metaphor. I care because of CVS, all right? CVS, stock up more than 7% today after a terrific quarter. A gain you would have missed if you were too focused on the tyranny of the tenure. CVS, with its 6,200 stores, 300,000 people worked there, 300,000 employees, I regard as a microcosm for the broader U.S. economy. Today, the company reported some incredible numbers with sharply better than expected demand at both the front of the store and the pharmacy. Despite the looming threat of Amazon and the worries about pressure of drug prices, CVS is doing great. The company's crushing it with its acquisition of Aetna, the big health insurance provider that so many had questioned when the company took on so much debt to buy it. Hey, when I spoke to CEO Larry Merlot this afternoon, he's one of my favorite executives, you know that. He talked about a robust consumer who comes in for a health product, then goes out with front-of-the-store merchandise. Oh, and he's now offering in-home delivery, a pretty cheap subscription, which he says the millennials love. Whatever. Now, CVS has, done, has a ton of debt from the Aetna deal, so they can potentially benefit from lower interest rates, just like a consumer who refinances their mortgage. The cash flow here is massive. There's a lot to like. Yet if you listen to the macro commentators, it's like they can't tell CVS from CBS. All stocks might as well be the same then. The basket of the S&P, well, it might as well be a basket of soy. They think they're all the same. Pieces of soy. Yeah. They're focused like a laser on the bond market and the Fed. Endlessly with the Fed. Aren't you sick of the Fed? I'm sick of the Fed. Even though lower interest rates combined with lower gasoline prices that we know are coming should be a major boon for the consumer. No wonder people have more money to spend on health and beauty items at the drugstore. As for the tariffs, they don't seem to be hurting CVS health customers at all. Business was strong across pretty much every aisle. Of course, that's just one example. Now, someone could say, Jim, but how about Disney? That disappointed. Imperfect quarter after roaring higher in recent months. Disney's story was never, though, about 2019. I told you over and over again, it's a 2021 story. Bottom line, don't let the talking heads blind you to everything that's going right, including lower interest rates. Sure, there are some negatives here. But if you keep your eyes open, if you have some what I call situational awareness, if you're like Coach Belichick and you get the job done and know your assignment, then when you're waiting in line at CVS, maybe you're thinking, I should buy this stock. Oh, and by the way, I think CVS's stock is worth buying at these levels after one of the greatest days in the company's history. The fact that the central banks in New Zealand and India just cut interest rates. Ooh, wow. Huh. Not that negative. Low rates will help turn their economies around. And in the meantime, they're making cheaper to borrow money here in the United States, too. I don't know. I guess it's a lose-lose if you're stupid. It's a win-win if you know what you're talking about. Alex in California. Alex. Hey, what's going on, Big Jim? Well, you know what, Alex? I'm tired of people being so darn negative. I don't know about you. Hey, I completely agree. I got a great question for you on Amgen. Mm. Uh, they've reported a great quarter, and I was just wondering what you think for the long term. I think that their cancer portfolio is much better than I thought even six months ago. I am not happy with their distribution of Amavig, which is their migraine drug, because they didn't get the uh, right formulary. Uh, yields sweet percent. It's got uh, a very good balance sheet. My charitable trust owns it. I would not sell it here. I would be a buyer at 12 times earnings. Not, and that's not buyer like buyer that mistakenly bought Monsanto. Drew, it's a stock joke. Drew in Florida. Drew. Booyah, Jim. Thanks for having me on the show. And shout out to the newest Eagle and USC alum, a Jane A. Harris. Man, I'm like everything I just heard. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, 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 like clear as day. Perfect. So I'm fairly new to stock trading and was curious to hear your thoughts on where you see Deutsche Bank heading. I know their earnings were rough, but is there reason to be optimistic given the restructuring? No. No. I mean, if you want to go down there, just go buy some Santander. 
I mean, I like J.P. Morgan. Was I too emphatic? I'm looking at my executive producer when I say no. Sometimes I could equivocate, but I, there's no reason to if I say no. It was, it was clipped. I was clipped. I, I, I meant to say, no, I wouldn't buy it. I thought it was sometimes more emphatic to say no. Ron in Florida. Ron. Jim, first time, long time. I, I love give first you a long. Big market up and down. Booyah. All right. I like that. See, my that's stock. creative. That's creativity. It's like Adobe. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, my stock is out front media, ticker symbol O-U-T. You had the CEO on your show a little while back. I like what I heard. Did my homework. Bought some stock. A nice little run. Just reported a good quarter. 5.3% dividend. I'd like to know what you think about them at the level they're at now. I, I like it. I, I like them. I think that you're de- dead right. And uh, the numbers were really pretty good. They were better than expected. And I think you got a good one. And by the way, just so we know, I did not mean to be clipped to Drew. Because Drew called in and deserves better than just no. I just didn't want him to speculate. On a day when J.P. Morgan stock is down badly, I would prefer J.P. Morgan than Deutsche Bank. And I'm sorry, Jamie, that I put those two in the same sentence. I think you'll accept my apologies. But we won't be dining in the Hamptons together. The tenure, the tenure, the tenure, the tyranny of the tenure, the tenure is coming. The ten- it's like a Paul Revere, okay? More like Paul Revere and the Raiders. Anyway, if you keep your eyes open, you'll realize in America, lower rates are actually positive, not negative. Unless we're bizarre, me like a muggly, me put well, well, wings victory. Remember that? The arms on Venus de Milo. Okay, I'll get those on, get the arms. Well, um, I am tired of hearing about all this defeatism, by the way. I'm getting real and examining where your money is safest. Then shares of Bausch Health took a tumble after reporting a mixed quarter. I'm going to sit down with the CEO to find out. We can maybe get a little clarity like the lenses. And uh, I've got the exclusive with the only cannabis stock that's received FDA approval. GW Performance being brought down because it's in these ETFs with all the other guys, you know? We're going to uh, THC this situation. So stick with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com. 